Everybody, please rise. Dear God, today as this session opens, we pray that your presence will be before us and everyone who serves in this decision-making process of our city. We pray for direction which will lead our city to be strong and unified. May we continue the legacy of our founders. May we be granted this day the wisdom to make decisions which will be for the good of our city. We also pray for your special blessings on all those who are working to transform our city and make it a better place to live and work. Amen. We'll now do the pledge. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty, justice for all. Thank you, everybody. Roll call. Council Conway. Yeah. Councilor Elliott. Here. Councilor Kennedy. Here. Councilor Leahy. Here. Councilor Mercia. Here. Councilor Milanazzo. Here. Councilor Noon. Here. Mayor Samaras. Here. Councilor Cirillo. Eight present. Uh, moments of silence, Councilor Mercia. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to offer a moment of silence in Darkin Chamber for Clarissa Samuels. Clarissa Samuels teed off Friday, September 20th onto the Grand Fairway following her courageous battle with cancer. The reason I say that is because she was quite a tremendous golfer and everybody knew that. During her lifetime, Clarissa touched many hearts with her devotion to family, great friends, and the community. We will truly miss her style, wit, humor, and knowledge, as well as her tenacity for life. A special thank you to everyone who provided exceptional support and loving care during Clarissa's battle with cancer. Um, Clarissa was the precious daughter, born in Lowell to Walter Samuels and Marion Gillig. Gilligan Samuels. She leaves behind her brothers and sister-in-law James from Kansas, Bruce and Mary Ann from Maine, and Gerald from Colorado. Her nephews Christopher Samuels from Maine, Jonathan Nicholas Hutzler from Kansas, her cousins Patrick and Terry Laffey, and her beloved fur baby nephew Henry. In addition to her parents, she was predeceased by her grandparents Gilligan and Samuel, Aunt Gladys Frazier, cousins John J. Frazier, and a longtime friend, Ann Coderre. Um, we offer her family uh, her, uh, condolences, and she will be truly missed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Council Leahy. Thank you. I'd like to offer a moment of silence for <clears throat> Lucy M. Martinez, uh, mother of Jen Ponte down the clerk's office. Uh, Lucy M. Martinez, a uh, Lowell resident, passed away Tuesday, October 8th, with her loving family by her side. She was beloved wife of Manny Martinez, with whom they had shared 45 years of marriage. Uh, born in Bayonne, Puerto Rico, on January 25th, 1946, she was the daughter of the late Justine, Justino Cotto and uh, Yulga. Perez Coto. Prior to her retirement, Lucy had been employed in the local mills. She enjoyed playing bingo, cooking, and shopping with her daughter, Jen. Most important to Lucy was spending time with her family, especially her precious grandchildren. 
In addition to her husband, she leaves three children, Manny Martinez Jr., his wife Megan, Jennifer Ponte, and her husband Mike, uh, Olive Lowell, and Joseph Martinez, and his wife Laura of Barica. She also leaves behind six grandchildren. She'll be sadly missed. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other? Please back in the chambers. Thank you. Before we begin the meeting, usually under mayor's business, we don't have that tonight, but I'd ask for a suspension of the rules to allow Mr. Chris Porter to speak on the town and city festival. So moved. So, thank you. By Councilor Mercier, second by Councilor Kennedy. Uh, we have Chris Porter here, who's uh, developed the town and city festival for Lowell Mass. This will be the second year of the celebration of music and art, and uh, Chris has quite a record behind him. He's done this in many cities, including cities as large as Seattle. And so we're pleased to have him here because Lowell's well on its way to becoming, we'll say, the next Seattle. Chris? Great. Thank you so much, very much, for the time here in your council meeting. Um, as, as Mayor Samaras said, this is our second year. Uh, it was quite an experiment last year, and I'm happy to say the experiment was a, was a good one. We felt like we were off to a great start, well enough to keep it going. We made notice not only in, our, in the Lowell region, but also in the whole New England region, and even to some artists who are from nationally touring acts who we have uh, presenting this year. We're presenting 60 performances over 11 venues uh, over two days, the 18th and 19th of October this coming weekend, um, and um, we're happy to report that you know revenues and ticket sales and sponsorship and general interest in social media has, has risen, and that's the whole idea. We're hoping to gradually grow this so it's an annual event, an annual event that's not only known in the air, this area but also in the Grand New England area and even nationally. Because the hope is, while we want something for 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 local folks, of course. We want people to come to Lowell, and this is while this is a nod to the spirit of Jack Kerouac, named after his first novel. Uh, it's also meant to be a celebration of Lowell, a celebration of the music and arts community here, and of the whole region. So I encourage and invite you all to uh, to come to the festival. More information you can find at the, our website, thetownandthecityfestival.com, and we also have an app, a phone app, which is really handy because it has a map and and all the uh, all the information, all the performances, and all of the shows. And uh, I hope to see a lot of you out there this weekend. Thank you so much for the time. Thank you, Mr. Bond. Chris has a national reputation, but he's Lowell Bond, so he's bringing this event to Lowell. So we want to thank you for that. So for, next, we have the minutes of the City Council meeting October 8th for the acceptance. I need a motion to accept the place of file by Councilor Conway, second by Councilor Noon. Then we go to unfinished business, order to vacate, discontinue, and abandon portion of Father Morris at Boulevard. It's already voted on. We need a roll call. In a motion. A motion, a motion, I'm sorry, a motion to adopt by Councilor Elliott, second by Councilor Kennedy. Roll call. Councilor Conway. Yes. Councilor Elliott. Yes. Councilor Kennedy. Yes. Councilor Leahy. Yes. Councilor Mercia. Yes. Councilor Milanazzo. Yes. Councilor Moon. Yes. Mayor Samaras. Yes. Councilor Cirillo. Eight yes. Could I just uh, yes. ask one question about that? Now, these buses will be along Father Morissette Boulevard, but they will be on the opposite side of the street from the homes, from the, um, the uh, homes and the apartments, the apartments. Yes, that, so they'd be on the, if you're going outbound right. to the right, on the right-hand side. On the other side. side, yeah. Thank you so much. You all set? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, it's too early for the uh, utility public hearings. We now go to communications with the city manager. And the first... Motion response is Stedman Street from Councilor Noon. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you for the report, Madam Managers and Natasha. I do have some question around this. Uh, Natasha Vance is here, um, Councilor. I, 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 the reason I uh, filed the motion because of the guide to uh, deliver uh, uh, mail to home. Uh, 
saying that this area is a problem in terms of traffic flow coming down from Stedman. I know that um, I know Natasha went in, uh, went down there and looked at it, and you indicated that you need uh, 38 feet the width uh, to do that, mm -hmm. to do it a three lane. Yeah, so the lanes need to be 11 feet wide, and then there's a two foot shoulder on both sides, and then a one foot wide, the double yellow in the middle. There's, there's no way around it to work the way it is now. Um, so we do have enough right of way to do it, but at the intersection, there's a curb. Um, it would require us shifting the curb a couple feet. Um, the other thing is we could consider um, seeing if, I mean, it's typically not per advisable to have the, um, the width of the lane be smaller than 11 feet. Um, there, are, there are some places generally much tighter constraints than this where you could go down to 10 and a half feet. We would still need another foot if we narrowed the lane. Um, I, yeah, and so the, I guess my concern would be the, where, where our right of way is shown on GIS, it looks like the, the buildings that are there um, are currently using that, that portion. So there would be an element of like shifting their parking spots. Um, I mean, we could look at a, a cost estimate to see what that would be. I just think it would might be difficult and expensive. I, I think, you know, it's possible, you know, looking for, you know, enough right way and shift the curve, um, you know, maybe in, that's in the long term. I like also the alternative that you propose to have a single lane traffic or a mm -hmm. single lane only do not pass because those are the area that really is troubling and yeah. accident happen when people try to, uh, you know, take right and the other one is taking left, yeah. sort of. And then, Agreed, you know, yes. We can, we can install the single lane only sign easily right, right. Um, and then per and explore the other options after that if, if that's acceptable to you. Yeah, I think in alternative for now, to, just for the time being, I think, you know, marking a lane as single lane or single lane only do not pass mm -hmm. and then looking forward you know, to maybe to, uh, is a possibility to uh, get enough right way and shift the curve and to make it work because certainly going to address a lot of traffic flow off Stedman because it back up is so bad. It, it is a very area. bad area for traffic, yeah. yeah. I appreciate the report. Thank you. Okay, sure. Councilor Elliott, then Councilor Mauricio. Um, I'm with Council New on this one, um, Ms. Vance. Um, <clears throat> I don't like the fact that it's expensive, but it's this is another cuts rule. People cutting through to get 495. It's becoming, it's become heavily traveled, and I, I think somewhere we've got to put it on the priority. People, there are two lanes now because people want to take a right. They don't want to wait for that left-hand turn. At some point, we'll need signals at this because of the volume. Yeah, um, I think it actually is warranted I, um, based on the volume that's there, a signal. But So yeah. this is not a state road, correct? This is West Virginia Street coming all the way Correct. Up, unlike mm -hmm. Princeton Boulevard. So I, I, I don't know what we need to do, but um, again, we've, we've been to a number of hearings on a variety of issues and traffic, traffic, traffic. This is another mm -hmm. area of the highlands that very complicated. So. I, I think we need to proceed with trying to get two lanes there, if if possible, because um, people can don't want to wait. I think you, we'd have to have it surveyed um, in order to determine whether there had to be any takings. We, right. we need to get a better handle on that. You know, certainly that's a last resort in terms of doing any kind of taking. Great. But we we would know better once we had okay. you know a, a survey. I think the short term posting single lane right mm -hmm. now at least is an effort to address it in the in the near term mm -hmm. but yes we so we can certainly post the signs within the next week or two as soon as the sign department is able those might be signs that they have to order and can't make so it might take a little longer but um and then i can look at um what it would take to evaluate i think we would need a survey we would need a cost estimate and then obviously um it's a pretty minimal design but there would still be right. need to be plans but yeah i just want to weigh in i i do think it's important i think it's a good motion i think it's something where lots of people travel every day and not that i don't want to put the signs up but pe people are going to make their own lane I, I hate to say it but people are going to they're going to make their own lanes because it doesn't make sense to sit in five minutes of traffic waiting for someone to take that left hand turn so um thank you for the report that immediate area, I see it from another angle because I've traveled it time and time again, and it's so darn frustrating. P 
picture yourself on uh, Westford Street and you're in a single file lane and you want to go up to Drum Hill because there's research drive and the, oh, yeah. uh, that's where you got to go to doctor's offices and things. Mm -hmm. And I see a long single line with people wanting to head to Wood Street, to um, Drum Hill, to that area there. And then there's people that want to take a left onto Stedman Street, but yet the traffic is so backed up with a single lane. Mm -hmm. If we had a double lane there, this crowd could shoot straight and this crowd could take a left. So I see it from both angles, from Councilor Noon's point of view, Councilor Elliott, and I see it from my own point of view. Mm -hmm. That has to be reconfigured to the modern day 21st century to get the traffic moving. And it's worth the money. Mm -hmm. Believe me, it's worth the money. I don't live there. I don't travel it that often. But people that have to do this day in and day out, how frustrating they must be. Mm -hmm. And it's only a simple means of widening the road to let this traffic go that way and that, let it take a left. Same way with coming down Stedman, mm -hmm. taking a right or whatever. I see it. I yeah. see so it. So you're really looking at an intersection realignment, all, all three legs of the intersection. Right. Not yeah. just As my side, we have the but room. Mm -hmm. his side as well. Mm -hmm. We ought to modernize it to today's technology, you know? I'm sorry. That's how I feel. How's, how's that? Yes. How's the lady? Thank you. Um, so, Natasha, how far do you recommend you go up Stedman Street? Do you have to go as far as Chelmsford Diagnostics? Um, so we don't have enough right of way the further we get up. The st I, I, would, I would probably rather comment once we've done, had a little time to study it. Um, I know that I've driven through this area and I've also driven out toward Research Place because I have a doctor out that way as well and it is, it is a really uh, difficult area for traffic. Um, I would say you would probably want to go a little further, but I don't. I can't definitively say how far. Is there so if you go from one lane into two lanes, mm -hmm. how far do you want? A hundred feet? Uh, I mean, probably in the hundred foot range, but it, it really depends on the traffic volume and how far you want to stack. Like how and right now, how far the queuing is stacking up. And um, to Councillor Elliott's point, if if this is an appropriate place for a traffic signal, I know it can be very difficult to get take a left at this location in all directions um, that also could have an impact on the level of service and how long the um, turn lane would need to be all right so my other question would be do we if we put signs up we have to paint it right um, if we put up the single lane signs but well I'm planning on painting this the next time I go out for the pavement marking but if we put up the single lines we won't have to do any additional painting all right so my question is do we I know it's something we probably wouldn't do like say next spring, but do we put up the lines and back the traffic all the way up the street or do we just let it play out the way it is and <clears throat> let people make their own lanes? Um, I, I mean, I think to Councillor Elliott's point as well, I think people are going to, to take that if they, if they think they can fit. Right. regardless of whether so where the double yellow line is um, people are already making two lanes right. to turn right so do we just leave it alone and study it mm -hmm. and try to do something next year or do we bother like bother putting the signs up I'm, yeah I suppose um, we'll leave it up to you but I'm just saying you know what I mean if well it's it, it would appear that you know we should look at this get the information as far as the, the what the um, basis of the motion was for three lanes and how much you know, survey that, but maybe step back and look at the entire intersection in terms of signalization. Either way, it's expensive, but yeah. it may be something that, you know, in the long term makes more sense. Okay. All right. Thank you. All set? All right. Thank you. Next, we have motion response low walking Freedom Trail, Councilor Conway. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. I, um, when I was talking with a, a couple of uh, uh, of uh, citizens from all they happened to suggest this and I thought it was a great idea when you take a look at um, the history of Lowell which is fascinating uh, as as most of us know that it's uh, considered the cradle of industrial revolution uh, we've had the the first integrated high school going back to 1843. There's so much rich history here in the city of Lowell, and and I will say that there are a number of people that, you know, that that give certain types of tours, like um, mm -hmm. uh, Richard Howe. Uh, I think probably most of us have have attended those tours, which I think are great. 
uh, but they're limited, obviously. He's, he doesn't, uh, it's, not, it's not a full-time job for him. It's a great hobby, and, and he contributes uh, much to the city. Uh, I think that, uh, again, looking at the history of, of Lowell, and I was very fortunate a number of years ago actually develop the first course at Lowell High School when we had the ninth grade at AFCO, uh, a history of Lowell. And I know myself, born and brought up here, I learned a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, just by teaching that course. So I think it certainly is, uh, um, I, I want to thank uh, Diane Trad uh, for putting this report together and I, I, I think that there could be something really great be put together here. Uh, you know, look who it's going to benefit. Obviously the city, the citizens of the city, uh, visitors, it's, that's going to uh, help with tourism. Uh, this, once you get the once you get people coming into the into the uh, city, we're also talking about uh, economic development potentially, uh, and the schools can utilize this too, uh, especially with the technology that we have today. So I think it's a, a great idea, and I applaud you people for uh, for putting this um, uh, actually putting this together. Um, I I look forward to the. Uh, to how it's going to play out and it looks like uh, there's going to be a meeting with a, a number of different entities and I think that's where uh, the real uh, the real business will take place once they vet it out and find out what direction we could go in and to make it as effective as possible so again thank you um, madam manager and thank you uh, Diane Trad for the uh, for the report All right, thank you next report update to crime stop this program Councilor Conway Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this is uh, the result of uh, a couple years ago when, when I met with some uh, police officers and I asked them, well, how could we make uh, things safer in the city of Lowell? And uh, uh, they named a lot of different things. Um, uh, but one of them uh, was the Crime Stoppers Hotline. And I think that perhaps most people are aware of it. Uh, and this is an, an opportunity. Um, and, and if you, uh, Madam Manager, can speak to this a bit, but I will say that it's uh, j just taking a look at some data. Uh, this program actually started in uh, 1976 in Albuquerque, uh, New Mexico. And um, since the first chapter uh, was officially formed in Albuquerque in 1776, the Crime Stoppers uh, in the United States have been responsible for more than a half a million arrests. So it, it works, there's no doubt. Uh, people sometimes don't want to get involved directly, but if they're anonymous, they certainly uh, won't mind stepping up and, and helping out, especially if there's a reward. And uh, not only were a half a million arrests, but also uh, more than $4 billion, $4 billion of recovered property uh, because of this program. So again, I'm excited that we're going to be uh, putting this back in law. And if you could comment on that, uh, Madam Manager. Thank you, thank you um, through you to the uh, council. Um, so this, this program, as we had reported earlier, had, had kind of gone into um, uh, a non use state and upon research and investigation we did discover that there were funds still available for this nonprofit for not crime stoppers um, located at law five bank um, you know unfortunately most of the people who had been on the board had either uh, been deceased or not no longer involved in this and so it required reconstituting the board but we have done that and um, the, we will also put it on our website. We'll, the police will put it on their website. We will use Twitter and all means to let people know about this. But essentially what it is, is if someone has a tip um, regarding a potential crime or a crime, they can call this number. And if the information they give um, results in the arrest of the individual or individuals responsible for the crime, uh, they can receive uh, up to $1,000 for their tip. And so uh, it's important, as you point out, Counselor, that the individual would be anonymous uh, and because sometimes people are fearful 
uh, that they're, if they're informing on, on someone for their identity. Uh, the number that individuals should call, we'll repeat it here, but we'll also make sure it's well uh, publicized out there, is the tip line at the Lowell Police Department, 978-459-TIPS, T-I-P-S, which is 8477. Uh, when they call, they will be given a number I, that they will use as their identifying factor, not their name. Uh, it's a five-digit uh, numerical code, um, and they will be told to call back in 30 days. The information will be investigated by the police, and then recommendations would come from the police to the board as far as um, re whether a reward is warranted and, and so forth. So. As you say, it's a tool that has worked in the past and has worked in, in uh, certain places. And uh, it's something that uh, Deputy LaRock will be heading up at the police department. Uh, and we have uh, appointed uh, people from the, the Assistant City Manager, Kara, Mar Kara, Kara Keith Mullen, uh, and Dan LaRock from the uh, police department, the Deputy Superintendent, Assistant City Solicitor, Stacy Mosier, Jack Moynihan, who is from a uh, Lowell um, neighborhood group, and Molly Sheehy. Uh, and Molly Sheehy, I'll point out, was part of the original board when this was in existence. And so uh, we're lucky to have people willing to um, participate and, and be on the board. So uh, we, we look forward to getting this program up and going again. All set, All set Councilor Conway. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So I think this is a good thing, Madam Mayor. There's a good motion that was filed by Councilor Conway, especially in a day and age where we want people, if they see something, to say something, they have a, they have a place to go. And there's an incentive, financial incentive. Uh, my question is, um, is there a way to uh, include a text option for this while, I, and I, I think I know the answer because you indicated that once they call, they get a number, um, a code yeah. that, <clears throat> that they can lead their tip. <clears throat> and I don't know if it's worthy to, to look into or not, but I, I do think where people are texting frequently when they see something, if there's an easy number to text to, um, it, it might make some sense. I've, I figured I'd just throw it out there maybe. I know this is a landline, um, so I'm not sure it's going to work, but maybe right. moving forward. Cause I, I think I think it's a great idea. I think it's another tool, as you mentioned, for the police department, and similar to community policing. People in the neighborhoods or on the streets are the eyes and the ears of, uh, or the eyes and, and the ears of the uh, of the police, where they can't be everywhere. So, I think it's a good idea. I just think, as we talked about technology moving forward, mm -hmm. if we can get a text, a function of text, then my be that much more effective. We, we can look into I know when looking at the research and in looking into this, I did see that there were uh, text opportunities. It wasn't necessarily under Crime Stoppers, but uh, we can research that. Right. Um, and whether that could somehow okay. um, be integrated. Uh, but this is a landline um, right. that that is right now being utilized. Um, so, but we can we can examine okay. that as well. There is a program out there for texting. In, in other communities. I know I have seen that, so. I just think that's, you know, maybe for us older folks, <laughs> we'll call it landline, but for the for the young kids that see something, boom, they'll shoot a text off, and, right. and that could be helpful. But I think it makes sense. It doesn't cost us anything. There's money there, and, um, and I, it's, it's, I think it's, it's a good tool. Also. We'll look into that. Right. Council Lee. Thank you. I was just going to say, you can text um, WCAP in the morning, so. You must be able to do it. Are they going to give a thousand dollar reward? <laughs> probably. <laughs> so if we can text the morning radio host, we can probably text there we this. Go. So. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we'll now take time to uh, at seven o'clock to go to the public hearings. The first public hearing, four point one, National Grid Verizon requests permission to reloc relocate J O poles at four ninety three Market Street. I want to open the hearing for anyone else to speak in favor. Hearing's open in favor. I'm Michelle Stacy. I'm a representative for the engineering department at National Grid. We're asking permission to move the pole because there's a new building, 493 um, Market Street, and the, the pole that's there now is in the way of the driveway. So we just want to move it out into the public way. 
Any questions? Thank you. Anyone else wants to speak in favor? In favor? That portion is closed. Anyone wants to speak in opposition? In opposition? That portion is closed. So I need a motion to refer to the, yes, Councilor Allen? I'll make that motion, but I also had a question. That sure. There's not an opportunity to eliminate that pole, is there? I mean, Market they, Street they're is. They're actually using that to go underground to a oh, they are. home a pad. Okay. So it's powering the building. Got it. Yeah. All right, so I need a motion to refer to the wire inspector. So moved, by, Mr. Mayor. By Councilor Elliott, second by Councilor Conway. Thank you. Next, we have Crown Castle East uh, request permission to extend Existing fiber network on Westford Street, Technology Drive. Hearings open. Anyone who wants to speak in favor? In favor? Uh, good evening, Bill Conway, Crown Castle. Uh, we're just looking to expand our existing network um, below uh, General Hospital to their um, locations at 10 and 20 um, Research Place in Chelmsford. Okay, any questions? Thank you. Anyone else who wants to speak in favor? In favor? This portion is closed. Anyone wants to speak in opposition? Opposition? That portion is closed. So I need a motion to refer to the wire inspector for report. Councilor Elliott, second by Councilor Mercia. Thank you. Next, we have National Grid request permission to install SCADA system, a SCADA system to comply with latest safety standards at the intersection of Hale and Chensford Street. I want to open the hearing for those who want to speak in favor. In favor. Thank you, City Councilors and Mr. Mayor. I'm Chris Marr, representing National Grid for the proposed SCADA installation. The proposed installation will augment the existing regular station with a SCADA system, provide real-time pressure information to our gas control office, meeting National Grid's latest safety standards. Uh, the installation will be installed in public sidewalk area and would comply with ADA sidewalk standards. And the compartment is identical to an existing identical to an uh, uh, to a traffic signal box you might see at a normal intersection any questions any questions thank you anyone else who wants to speak in favor in favor that portion is closed anyone who wants to speak in opposition in opposition opposition that portion is closed I need a motion to refer to the wide inspector for a report and recommendation by Councillor Milanazzo, second by Councillor Noon. Thank you. We'll now go back to informational reports. First informational report from the city manager is Monument Committee updates. Madam Manager. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. The um, council had passed a motion um, back in May to establish a Monument Committee to deal with um, uh, matters having to do with dedications, public spaces, buildings, and, and the like. Um, we, uh, the Monument Committee, if you recall, under the ordinance had specific categories that um, were to be represented. We posted it a number of times, um, and uh, we were, it, it took some get time getting the uh, people with the correct um, experience, but we do have a compliment on the Monument Committee uh, currently. Uh, so this is notifying the council as to who are the members of the Monument Committee. You will see that uh, the categories represented urban planning, historic preservation, legal, design and landscape, veterans, neighborhoods, and the arts community. Um, we were able to appoint, and each appointee will serve a term of three years. Um, and the although the appointment isn't uh, one that has to be confirmed by the council. We wanted to let uh, the council know that uh, all members have uh, agreed to serve. There are a number of motions pending that were referred to the Monument Committee. Um, we have a tentative date of them having their first meeting, October 30th. Uh, we'll confirm that with the council. I think we're still waiting on a couple of members just to make sure everybody's available. Um, there were two members who, uh, though they have the requisite, uh, they may either work for the city or have, have um, experience but don't live in the city under the terms of the ordinance. Um, it allowed uh, that it's, if, if we were unable to fill it with someone from the city. So I wanted to alert the council to that. We tried many times in reaching out to, uh, 
to, to people in the city. So um, I think it's a good compliment of people who um, will then take up these matters. Kelsey Elliott. Thank you, Madam Manager. I know this wasn't easy getting people to volunteer um, on, on boards where there's no pay. Um, is, is sometimes a challenge, particularly given the um, qualifications that we looked for. So uh, it was nice to see this report that the committee has been formed and they'll be moving forward. I know that myself, Council Mercy, and others, we've we brought motions. I mean, it's a good thing there. You know, our many communities are interested in um, you know in, in putting a monument or recognizing nationalities, cultures, etc. And uh, I I think this is going to be a productive committee that will put together policy and and guidelines and I think there'll be lots of interest and we'll be expanding that plaza uh, more so and again it, you know all these monuments they don't cost the city anything but it's good to have uh, in place and <clears throat> will, will you or your staff be reaching out to the various um, organizations that come before I mean I don't ex have any expectations they're all going to be discussed in one night but right well, um, we will let everybody know whose motions are pending that the okay. motions are being referred right. to the monument committee it's my understanding that um, so the monument committee wants to set up some process or standards and that would be I would expect at their first organizational meeting so they may not be taking up decisions that night but we will certainly alert everybody who is connected to any of the motions and as I said there are several right. um, that this is where uh, the the monument committee where they'll meet when they'll meet um, obviously these meetings will be posted just like any any meetings and we would also want them to be televised so people can see um, the 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 uh, consideration um, and, and so forth right. so now, we, this was done for the veterans. I think it has been very successful and productive. So, again, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Madam Manager, for this, because this is very important. I believe that one time I had a motion to try to get a Colombian uh, yep. stone for, for the people at a Colombian. This will probably be referred there as well. Um, I know some time ago I created a tidal wave when I re requested some information if it were possible to move a stone across the street from the firefighters club to the North Common. That would not happen. That's okay. We just wanted to know where we stood with that because they wanted to create a 911 uh, memorial. So I'll be making a motion and uh, because they have a place in mind where they would like to create one, not move any statue or anything, but to create a 911 memorial. So uh, having in the future to make that, it will be referred to this as well. So if we could then get uh, an idea on how did they determine whatever their decision was, I know October 30th would be a guide set up type right. of meeting but after that if we could get an idea as to the outcome of their decisions that'll be nice too. sure thank you so much and, we, and they would have minutes kept just like any uh, committee is our anticipation well that's good thank you so much I think it'd be Kelly, then Newton. I'm sorry mayor I, I wanted to speak on the next item not this oh. item Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I want to commend uh, the managers uh, for the selection of this highly respected individual in their field and also thank this individual too for their willingness to serve because there's needed in this monument committee to move things as motion that have been waiting uh, to be uh, approved uh, ahead. Uh, so I, those two things, thank you for gathering this highly respected individual and those individuals who are willing to serve on this committee. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I realize I uh, omitted announcing who they are on the Monument Committee, so I'll just read their names. Um, Craig Thomas with a background in urban planning, Steve, Stephen Stoll for historic preservation, Richard Howe, um, he could serve two roles, legal and veterans, um, Mark Vanderheide and Heather Forsyth, <clears throat> both with a design and landscape background, uh, Jacqueline Coles, Matt Matthew Elkins and Eric LaMarche um, as an alternate um, to represent the veterans' interests on the committee. Um, we have uh, Jairo 
Naranjo and Anne Marie Page representing the neighborhoods. And uh, last, um, uh, representing the arts community, are Henry Marchand and Maxine Farkas. And we thank them for agreeing to serve. Okay. Thank you. All set? All right. Next is Municipal Lien Auction. Madam Manager. Yeah, this is an update um, from the solicitor um, regarding the uh, Friday, the October 4th uh, annual lien auction. Um, as was stated here, there were just nine parcels uh, in, the, in the auction this year. And um, the, it, it does appear more and more people are addressing late payments before the city is, has to put um, parcels out to auction. So Friday's auction brought in a, a roughly $71,000 uh, uh, collected on a lien package, um, a little more than uh, beyond what it was valued. And uh, this would represent uh, the law department's efforts in the collection of about 855000 since the initial tax title takings last December, December 18, 2018. So it's um, an update as to where we stand on, on the lien auctions. House Kennedy. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I was happy to see that, the, uh, that this was the smallest auction. We've been doing this now for six or seven years. And the city has, this has brought in a lot of money over the years, but this is the smallest amount this year, which I think is um, really a measure of the success of, of the auction in the first place, right? In, in other words, if we, were to, to, um, if we were to eliminate the auction, we would expect that, um, that those municipal liens would grow and grow back to where they were when we first started this. So the, the very fact that we're doing the auction um, should going forward keep that amount low, which is exactly um, what we want to see happen. Yeah. You all set? Yes. Council Member uh, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is my question. There were nine parcels of property that were going to be auctioned off. I might have believed that people paid what was due and they weren't auctioned off. That's, that is correct. This solicitor can address that. We have seen more people coming in. So rather than let their property go on the auction list, they are actually paying the, the taxes due. Oh, good. So they didn't lose their property. They no. They paid no. what, was, what was owed on it. Uh, the solicitor uh, could expand solicitor. on that. Sure. Also, just to, to respond to Councillor Kennedy, Senator Kennedy's uh, points, that's absolutely correct. This, uh, this lien auction that has been uh, in place now for several years it's not just the lien itself, uh, it's the amount of money, the 855000 that is coming in as the result of all of those steps that we take during the course of this process. And it is reasonable to believe that if we weren't engaged in the auction process, a large portion of that money that was collected, the 855000 would have remained outstanding as it had in years past and then just building up. So we're, we're certainly getting to a point where there may come a time where we don't really even need a lien auction, that, that uh, there is the um, a benefit of payment before we get to that point. We also see that there are really very few um, uh, agreements to pay um, uh, payment agreements that um, individuals are entering into, where there used to be a lot of them, where they're getting into monthly payments. We hardly have any of those as well. So people are finding the ways and means to, uh, to pay up front, which uh, is not only good for the city, but good all around. Okay, all set. Any further questions? Thank you. Uh, Council Leahy. Um, just, there's a couple of people waiting. I just didn't know if we could uh, take five, three, and six, two out of order before we do the presentation. Well, okay. Make a motion to motion. take those out of order. Second by Councilor Elliott. All right. Five three. This point Amy L. Pesia to Council on Aging. And your motion to adopt. So moved. Moved by Councilor Mercia. Second by Councilor Noon. Roll call. Councilor Cohen. Yes. Councilor Elliott. Yes. Councilor Kennedy. Yes. Councilor Leahy. Yes. Councilor Mercia. Yes. Councilor Milanazzo. Yes. Councilor Noon. Yes. Mayor Samaras. Yes. Councilor Sorello. Eight yes. Manager. I, I just want to say Amy Pesia is here tonight. I don't know if she wanted to say a few words. Thank you, Madam Manager, and to the council. 
Mr. Mayor, and for everybody in the city, I'm looking forward to serving alongside a dedicated group of the Council on Aging, and I'm going to, although there's no way to replace her, I'm going to take the seat that was formerly held by Sue Ellen O'Neill. Those of you who knew Sue Ellen, she was committed to helping seniors, elders, access all services and enhance their lives as much as possible. She worked with us at the Merrimack Valley Food Bank and sadly passed away. And we look forward to continuing serving seniors at the food bank. And I personally want to take over that commitment to helping the folks already on the council. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Yes, Council. Council Mercy. I graduated from St. Patrick's Grammar School with Susie O'Neill. Yes, she was a lovely, she was a y lovely young lady as well. Thank you. Okay. Was there anybody else, Council? Uh, and six two. Six two. Could, could, Mr. Mayor, we also do six one. That'll get all the votes of the managers out of the way. Okay. It just makes sense because I okay. think there's people from the health department here. Okay. Sure. Thank you. All right. The first six one vote grant expend. Grant from Greater Lowell Health Alliance for Lowell 2020 Vision Program. Waive the full reading, second reading by title. Authorize the city manager to accept and to expend funds from a grant from the Greater Lowell Health Alliance to be administered by the City of Lowell Health Department. Is there a motion to adopt by Councilor Elliott, second by Councilor Leahy. Uh, discussion? Okay. Roll call. Council Conway. Yes. Councilor Elliott. Yes. Councilor Kennedy. Yes. Councilor Leahy. Yes. Council Mercia. Yes. Council Milanazzi. Yes. Council Noon. Yes. Mayor Samaras. Yes. Council Cirillo. Eight yes. Okay. Next, uh, six two, vote authorized city manager execute a license agreement with UMass Lowell for banners and light poles at the various locations. Waive the full reading, second reading by title. Authorize the city manager to enter into a license agreement with the University of Massachusetts Lowell to encroach upon the city's property for University of Massachusetts Lowell UML banners to be located on light poles at various locations on City of Lowell property. I need a motion to adopt. So moved. By Councilor Conway, second by Councilor Noon. Any discussion? Roll call. Councilor Conway. Yes. Councilor Elliott. Yes. Councilor Kennedy. Yes. Councilor Leahy. Yes. Councilor Mercia. Yes. Councilor Milanazzo. Yes. Councilor Noon. Yes. Mayor Samara. Yes. Councilor Cirillo. Eight yes. Thank you. All set. All right, back to uh, City Manager. National Grid presentation, legal decision on gas modernization project. Madam Manager. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, representatives from National Grid are here tonight. You may recall they had been in in the past, and they are here to uh, make a presentation on what is entitled the Lowell Area Gas Modernization Project. We did include information in your packet uh, concerning the update, including a more recent decision from, I believe it's DPU, uh, regarding the site, uh, site board. Uh, but um, this is to explain the project that is uh, included in Tewksbury as well as Lowell. And uh, I, with your permission, I'll turn it over to the folks from National Grid to, to explain the project. Thank you very much. Um, we have here a board. May we use your easel? Yeah. Please just give your name and then title and then. Yep. Um, my name is Sue Scarcella. I am stakeholder manager at National Grid for U.S. Capital Projects. Um, good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council, Madam C City Manager, and members of the public. On behalf of National Grid, uh, on behalf of the National Grid team assembled here, uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak with you tonight about an important gas safety project. Um, National Grid is a gas and electric distribution company focused on safely, reliably, and efficiently connecting people to the energy they use. We do not produce the energy that we distribute to our customers. Rather, we, pur we purchase electricity and natural gas from suppliers and deliver it safely to over 7 million customers throughout Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and New York. National Grid employees are dedicated to safety, and it lies at the core of all we do. Safety is our number one priority for every job, everywhere, every day. 
This evening, we're here to discuss the Lowell Area Gas Modernization Project, which is a $40 million safety improvement project impacting a portion of our existing gas infrastructure in the greater Lowell area, including Chelmsford, Tewkesbury, and the city of Lowell. Recognizing that time is limited this evening, I will ask the project manager, Matt Hayward, to provide a brief overview of the project. After Matt's presentation, we will do our best to answer questions as time permits. We also invite the public to submit questions. We have a dedicated um, project website, and over here there is the information, and Matt will also speak to that as well. But we also look forward to discussions with the Conservation Commission and affected agencies. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good evening, everyone. My name is Matt Hayward, and I'm the project manager for the uh, Lowell Gas Area Modernization Project. I want to thank the City Council, the Mayor, and the City of Lowell for allowing us here tonight. Uh, so the Wilbur Lyell Gas Pipeline is a pipeline that runs through Lowell, Chelmsford, and Tewkesbury. It's about five miles long. This was installed in roughly the 1960s. Uh, and the Lowell Area Gas Modernization Project, the project we're speaking about tonight, is focused on the modernization of this pipeline using new technology to increase safety and also meet new government regulations. Uh, the project is actually a collection of projects. Um, it consists of six different projects, all focused on standardizing the gas line to allow for inline inspection. Uh, this new technology and these new regulations require the use of smart pigs or pipeline inspection gauges to be used throughout the pipeline. Uh, these inspection gauges or, or pigs, as they're shortened up to be, uh, are propelled through the gas pipeline using the, the existing gas in the pipe. Uh, these new smart pigs, um, are able to provide us with real-time feedback, everything from corrosion, third-party damage, or even weak points in the pipe. So it really gives us a better idea of how our pipes are doing day to day uh, without having to go out there and, and have to excavate it. Uh, so as I mentioned, there are six pieces to this project, uh, the largest being uh, the replacement of six inch and eight inch on the Wilbur lateral. Uh, as I said, we need to standardize this to allow for an inline pig. And in order to do that, we need to make sure that the pipe size is the same throughout the entire length of the pipe. This section that we'll be replacing is roughly about two miles. Um, this is just a replacement. This is not an extension. Um, but as I said, we got to make sure that the six inch and eight inch match up to the other 12 inch that's existing. Uh, the other two pieces are the pig receiver and the pig launcher. Uh, the pig launcher is down at the Tewkesbury LNG plant and will be installed on our, on our right away there. Uh, the pig receiver is placed up at the Wilbur Street regulator station. Um, the fourth piece of the project, this is a horizontal directional bore. Uh, horizontal directional bore is drilling horizontally underground and then being able to pull the pipe through that hole that was just drilled out as to uh, minimize any traffic interruptions. This will be taking place on the Chelmsford side of the Lowell connector um, and exiting up on the Lowell side of 495. Uh, the last two pieces are a little bit smaller. We have a T replacement at the Brick Kiln Taste Station in Chelmsford, as well as an elbow replacement, which is basically right next to where the, uh, the pig launcher will be installed in, um, in Tewkesbury. Uh, this project is expected to start mid-March 2020, once we have all the uh, needed permits in place, and is expected to work in these various locations, those six I just mentioned, um, up until about July 2021. Uh, the majority of the work will take place on our right-of-way. We have, I believe, three small street crossings on Chelmsford Street, West Forest Street, and Marshall Street uh, that we'll also need to cross just to continue along on our right-of-way in that area. Uh, all the work will be taking place during normal construction hours except for the Chelmsford Street crossing. We plan to do that at night, again, to just minimize traffic impacts in that area. Um, and then to wrap up, as, as Sue said, we do also have a project website that was just updated and revised. Um, you're able to go on there and find out up-to-date project information. Um, you're also able to join the email uh, project distribution list, as well as there's also a place to post any questions or concerns that the team can, can back, get back to you right away on. Uh, the website is www.lowellareamodernization.com. Um, as I said, it was just newly updated. It's, it's good looking, but um, it, it really gives you some an outlet to reach out to the team and find a little bit more about the project as uh, as we update it and progress throughout it. So again, I want to thank everyone here tonight. I appreciate the opportunity, and uh, we look forward to working with you. Any uh, Council Thank you. Um, 
So when this er, smart pig yep. goes through the pipes yep. and it detects some um, corrosion or whatever, yep. uh, are you then going to fix that spot? Or exactly. That's, okay. that's the whole purpose of okay. getting this through there. So it's that, you know, the, right now the old style that we use is we have to go along the pipe and every so often dig up different areas, which obviously causes a lot of disturbance, sure. need permits. But with this new way, we can send it from the Tewksbury launcher site all the way up to the uh, Wilbur gate station, or regular station, without having to dig up anything. And throughout that way, it's giving us feedback inch by inch, foot by foot of the pipe. It's almost on the idea of a colonoscopy, wouldn't you think? <laughs> <laughs> but I think a little bit easier, but yes, right along the okay. same line. <laughs> all right, that's what I thought. <laughs> that's a good analogy. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> similar. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I have no answer to that one. <laughs> Council Melanazzo. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, thank you for being here tonight updating the council. Um, I'm just curious as to the contractors and our subcontractors. Will they be employees of National Grid or will, will they be subcontracted to uh, National Grid? Again, to bring up Columbia Gas, um, we just want to make sure that not only Lowell, but Tewksbury and Chelmsford, the neighborhoods are safe once you begin doing this work. Um, and again, I could be talking completely out of, um, on the wrong subject, but from the standpoint of modernizing what we're talking about here, you could get into pressure valves and so forth. I just want to kind of reassure the viewing audience that the contractors that will be on site will be licensed and fully aware of the work that needs to be done and the safety that needs to be no exactly, to. exactly. Okay. No, I agree with you too. And to answer your question, so we are still going through the bid process on this on you know, uh, all the contractors that submitted their information to us. But one of the biggest factors that when it comes to that is making sure they have their, their operator qualifications, making sure they have the experience. Um, you know, we understand the importance of this project, especially for the city of Lowell, and making sure that we have the right people out there that meet our needs, meet the, the regulatory needs and safety needs is, is our number one. I mean, that was a good question by Councilor Milanazzo, but I want a little more. In other, in other words, what happened in Columbia was they just wrong a lot of wrong things and what have you, but what have you got as a backup to ensure that at key points, I mentioned it's more key points, is there a process, a checklist process or something like that that they go through because you know, we never want to see something like alarmance or what have you. No, and I understand that. And, um, you know, I think that's one of the biggest things that kind of does separate us apart from that whole situation is our process, uh, the internal process for reviewing to make sure the design plans are up to date, reviewing to make sure that the contractors are all certified, reviewing to make sure that our procedures for installing the pipe and installing the tie-ins, which is one of the bigger issues that occurred up in uh, Columbia Gas, is making sure that our procedures are followed and making sure that that doesn't happen. It's something that's reviewed by multiple groups, you know, construction, uh, my group and project management, also uh, price for regulation. So it goes through many different checkpoints and many different eyes to make sure that it's, it's safe and that's followed. Important. Thank you. Anyone else? Councilor Kennedy. Thanks. You, you said it, it is, uh, is the length that will be in Lowell in the city limits, that's two miles? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. And so you gave us a timeline, but the timeline seems to include um, the surrounding communities as well. Yes, it does. So what is the timeline for Lowell specifically? Like when would this begin for Lowell and when would it end for Lowell? I can answer half of that question for you. Um, so right now we don't have the specific time frame of when we're going to have all that work in Lowell. I can tell you that we will be starting in Lowell in March 2020. Um, and then I can also tell you that we can get back to you with a better answer than that. Because I'm not sure on the ending, as I said, it's going to be based off the contractor schedules. And since we're still going through the bid process, we're still gathering that information so that we can better communicate it to you guys. Okay. And you have to rip up three streets? Uh, it's perpendicular, so we're just crossing them, but yes. Crossing three streets. Yes. And when would you do that? Uh, so Chelmsford Street, we're planning on doing that at night just to avoid um, traffic disruptions. And for the other three, it comes down to conversations with the city of Lowell. You know, we got to make sure that, you know, we're crossing these streets at times that are appropriate to them. Um, and then just making sure that fits up with their schedule. So if I ask you how long that's going to take or how long those streets are going to be tied up, you're probably going to want to get back to me on that, too. I think that's probably the best bet. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else? Madam Manager? 
Uh, no, the, as I said, this um, presentation, National Grid wanted to come in, and, and Mr. Mayor, you had requested that it be made to the council as a whole so that the council could ask any questions that, that the council wanted. So next steps, you know, moving forward, we will look through the process. I believe this Conservation Commission is a stop on the way that National Grid has to make in connection with this project. Uh, I don't believe they have to go to the Planning Board of the ZBA. Um, they have received approval from DPU, so um, we'll continue to uh, work through this process. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for the report. Thank, thank the manager for making this happen. Thank you. All right. I need a motion to accept the placement file. All this by Councilor Elliott, second by Councilor Mercia. We next uh, report subcommittee. Any subcommittee reports? We have a petition. Uh, Broadway Pizza requests City Council to remove recent tow zone designation in front of 60, 651 Broadway Street, as well as removing parking ban from School Street to Wilder Street. I need a motion to refer to the Engineering uh, Department for a report and recommendation. Council Mercia. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, when I read this, this is the third business that is pleading with the city to revisit the parking policy and designations that greatly impact family, long-standing businesses in this community that have endured the good and the bad in the city, but now they've met with their wits end. They are pleading for a break. That's what I'm gathering from this letter. They are greatly impacted by these restrictions. They're losing business. And I think that we could do something about it, or we want or do we want another empty storefront? I think we don't want that. We heard the same scenario from the Olympia on Market Street, from Cody's Market on Salem Street, and now Broadway Pizza. I think we have to put our act together and try to figure how can we help businesses instead of what, what are we going to do to aggravate them and irritate them? And I think that's what I read from this letter, I, I read this and it, it made me sad to see that long-standing family businesses are faced with so much roadblocks and this, like the other two. And so, are you from the Broadway? Yes, Oh, yes. I did not know, but I, I'm sad to see this. I think we gotta do all we can to help businesses instead of having another empty storefront. I don't think it's too much to ask for the trade-off to, to try to say, can you give me a 15-minute parking or whatever? It's not everybody that comes in to eat. They get their meal and they, they leave. They take it to go and we get all these, it's, is it about money for the meters that we're so desperate to hurt people? I, I don't want to do that anymore. Uh, we have Council Leahy, but this, do you allow, want to allow the petitioner to speak for us, Council? Yeah, yeah, I yeah, didn't know he was here. Speak. I just want to know if you can, the manager can let us know what's going on there after he speaks. Yeah, sure. Okay. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Evstathios Xagoros. Uh, everybody calls me Steve. Um, basically, I'm here because uh, there was a tow zone uh, sign put in front of Broadway Pizza. I believe it was Saturday the 5th of October. And uh, it just... I wish I didn't have to be here to complain about it, but uh, you know, uh, I added a couple things to the letter that everybody has in front of them. Um, that it was actually from Phillip Street to School Street, where the biggest problem is for us, at least. Mm -hmm. And uh, I added another tiny little thing that explained that my father, many years ago, um, now has passed away, just a few months back, but. Um, all his friends made fun of him for not taking the opportunity to rebuild what was originally in the parking lot to have more income from three more units or whatever he could have gotten at the time. But he wanted to have parking for his tenants because what would have happened today if we didn't have that parking lot, I think we would have been closed, obviously. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just, uh, I know it's a problem for the buses as well. You know, I know there's a lot of this SNR corporation, they're good people. Um, but without that parking in the front, we're a fast food business and there's no way for our customers, we have customers of 40 years that stop there and we help bring their pizzas to their cars and everything. And without being able to park in the front, our drivers 
Our business also with our drivers would be closed if it wasn't for delivery over the time that the bridge was closed down the street for quite a while, a few years at least. And uh, without our drivers, we wouldn't be there once again. And uh, just getting so hard to be in business, I uh, don't know if we could somehow come to some agreement somehow if you have any better idea. Obviously, we respect the city of Lowell and we respect everybody's decision, but we could really use the help. It's uh, getting a little tough. No, thank you. Thank you. Councilor Lee. Thank you. I just, I'm not aware of what's going on, so maybe. So we, we will get you a report. Um, the traffic, I did have a, a conversation with the traffic engineer. This is the result of the Tiger Project, Tiger Bridge Project. The Pawtucket over Pawtucket Canal has been rerouted to Broadway. It's a safety issue and having enough room to pass because of the one way that's out there. So we will get a full report. I mean, I do know you have a parking lot and, and yeah, some yeah. parking spaces, you know. With taking the neighbor's parking and I Yeah, no, no, I, but we'll get a report, but it's, it's the Tiger Bridge project that's causing, that's why the signs yes. went up because they're now working in that area on the Tiger Bridge project. So, and you are correct, the project it's, could last up to yeah. two years, but unfortunately, it, it, yeah, when a bridge gets shut years. down, things get rerouted, yeah. so. But we will get you a full report. Okay, thank you, thank you. Those three lanes, it just made it pretty tough, but I understand, like I said, we respect obviously like we yeah have we want to work years, with businesses you know. obviously and so forth we just but we just don't want people to no. get into head-on collisions course, out there it, either so no, thank it. you for your petition but it will, it will be listened to Councilor Noon. Thank, thank you mr mayor i i concur with everyone and i know that the managers have all understood that you know neighborhood businesses is the backbone to our economic development in the city we need to do what we can to help and i'm pleased to hear that the manager will work with, you know, her staff, have her staff work with, you know, the, the individuals here before us tonight to do what we can to help understand that we do have a tiger bridge and that bridge needs to be done. And if that sign's gonna be there for two years, certainly this business is going to be really hurt badly. So what we, what you can do to help, uh, you know, the, uh, him is clearly, it's, it's, He's be very grateful for that. Thank you. Yeah. Councilor Kennedy, then Councilor Elliott. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You know, we, um, I think we went over this issue at last week's meeting, uh, but this one is a little bit unique because apparently there's a, there's a reason why that sign's gone up, right, because of the bridge. But I, I do think that um, we have to, you know, if the sign stays up for two years, the business probably isn't gonna last two years. Um, so I, I think we need to come up with another solution. It, it's same thing on um, on Route 38 in the nighttime when they're doing the improvements to Route 38. Th those businesses that stay open late at night, they're getting slammed because there's no traffic to speak of and any traffic is just going through, they're not stopping. So, you know, the Dunkin' Donuts and the strip malls and so forth, once they start that, that's, uh, they're getting slammed up. Fortunately, um, that work goes on uh, late in the evening, so it's not as bad or doesn't have that much impact with them all day long. But it, it's the same type of thing. I think that when, and we have a lot of traffic improvements going on, which is a good thing, and improvements to the infrastructure, but I think that um, when we're doing it, we need to be as thoughtful as we can to make sure that we're protecting the businesses that we have, particularly the smaller businesses that, um, that can't survive that kind of uh, drought, if you will, in, in revenue over the long term. Thank you. How's that, Elliot? Yeah, I, just to follow up, um, is there a way that um, we're monitoring this, um, the construction on some of the bridges? I, I tell you, Madam Manager, I, I know companies bounce around, and particularly for that Pawtucket Street, I go by there every day uh, on my way home, and there doesn't seem to be activity on a regular basis. And um, I, I don't know if they're waiting for inspections or what have you, but I, I get it because then I come right by this. Maybe we can eliminate parking on one side because, you know, and quite frankly, it's it's the UMass low buses that 
um, also are going down there. Maybe we, maybe there is another route with some of the traffic. I know. Yeah, we'll we'll look at it. I mean, it is it is a problem when you have a bridge oh, out. You know, point. that's. It, it, but we'll we'll look at uh, you know what the options are. Okay. I mean, as I said, I think fortunately for you, you do have some parking in your parking lot where some businesses have it. And I understand you have tenants and you have, but you do have things marked for Broadway. You know, yes, in, yes. in your parking lot, which is, but we certainly want to be uh, as helpful as we yeah. can. So we will look at this and we'll ask Natasha but it's really tough it is tough so um, madam major on that when you say two years um, so one one part of Pawtucket that, no, I, that's I think that particular bridge has about a two-year but this is a project head up by MassDOT and we're working with the city is working on it and MassDOT so we can get an update on that one um, but it's obviously it's a very complex project you know the central street we did demobilize because it had to be redesigned and we didn't want to leave mm -hmm. it impacted throughout the winter so that people could pass on central we are monitoring these each one that's happening but they are much in need of repair and are mm -hmm. taking time but we'll get an update okay, on, thank you. on why you know on how long that's going to be out and making sure they're working on it Councilor um, I wasn't really going to say much, but I think Councilor Elliott has a point. You know, it's even like the courthouse. Um, we just have to demand as a city, like with the landscaping, they shut down one lane of Middlesex Street. Um, I mean, all the jobs I'm on, you have a timeline. You, you know, landscaping has to be done from whatever, June to August 1st, and then that's it. You know, the barriers come up. So maybe it's the same like on this bridge, you know. I mean, some of these state contracts, the state just has to toughen up and say, you know, you're here for two weeks, you're here for a month, and you're here for two months, and then that's it. I mean, that Middlesex traffic has been awful for a long time. And you never, I mean, I, I see what they're doing with the landscaping, but it just takes forever. It does you know, take a long time. They need a timeline, you know. You, you got two months to put the sidewalk and the landscape in, and that's it. So if you want to work around cars, get it done. And probably the same thing with these bridges. So that's all. Just yeah. add that. I, I want to thank you all imagine. for your time. You know, the, th the thing is, what we have is, because of the success of the city, we have many of these projects. But like this business here, this has been a business that's been around a long time. And I concur with uh, Councilor Kennedy. These are businesses that have been, you know, had a, had, a, had a strong footing in the city of Lowell. And I think what we have to do is think creatively in a sense of maybe in those areas there, I understand the construction's going on, but maybe at a certain time there'd be no parking because of high traffic. But for the, you know, for the remainder of the day, maybe there, there would be available parking. I think what we we're looking for in the report is not the, let's say, same old, same old, mm -hmm. the rules are such, and. You know, there's so many cars going per thousand or what have you, but I, th I think our people have to start thinking creatively for what they can do to help our businesses. So that's what I'm looking for. Like all of us are. Thank you for your report. Thank you very much, all of you, for your time. Okay. I need a motion to refer to the uh, traffic engineer by Councilor Conway, second by Councilor Mercia. Thank you. <clears throat> second? Yes, that was all set. All right, we have with now uh, City Council motions. First motion by Councilor Conway, request City Manager explore feasibility of developing a partnership between the city, regional business community, and LRTA to identify satellite transportation sites for the purpose of mitigating the traffic in the city. I need a second by Councilor Mercia, Councilor Kennedy, I mean uh, uh, Conway, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I think that we will all agree that traffic is an issue in the city. We've talked about it almost every single meeting in one form or another, uh, whether it's traffic or parking or the garages and so forth. And I think that what we have to do is, is put as many ideas on the table and vet them out to see if we can help mitigate this um, uh, the traffic. I don't think there's any, uh, there's no magic bullet here that's going to solve all the problems in the city with traffic, but uh, I, I know this is done in other areas, 
And I just thought that it might be worthwhile for um, the uh, city manager uh, and the city itself, um, the business community, uh, LRTA, all again, combine forces here, take a look at a partnership and see if we can take a look at some of the potential spots that might be, we could perhaps lease or the individuals that are driving into the city and they use the, uh, the garages. The other day I, I came down and it was around noontime, I couldn't find a spot and I looked at the parking garage and it was all filled up. So I'm saying, well, where do you go? Now, keeping that in mind, we have to take a look at, and we talk about it all the time, about economic development. You need to get your clients in to the city, into your place of business in a timely fashion, and they need to get out in a timely fashion. Not only the business, uh, your, your, your um, uh, patrons, but also, um, you know, the people that are supplying different, whether it's food or supplies or whatever, uh, you, need to, you need to get them in and out in a timely fashion. So uh, it certainly will help, I think, if we can, help, if we can identify certain areas. Uh, again, it might not solve all the problems, uh, but I think we have to look at as many of these as, as possible uh, because, uh, as we have seen, traffic is not going to get better. And I don't think anybody has the single answer here. So uh, I, I did look into it uh, a bit, and I know that you know there's a lot of legal, um, should we say, stumbling block blocks to it, perhaps. But I think that when I did talk to a few people in regards to it, they said it, it can be worked out. It has been worked out, and uh, I just uh, I'm, I look forward to the report and see if, uh, see if it makes any sense at all. Thank you. Okay. Next, motion by Council Kennedy, request city manager provide a report to city council regarding the possibility of having the city fund a new portable switcher for LTC at the estimated cost of 28,000. Second. Second by Council Kennedy. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this motion is in response to a request that came in by email to I think every member of the city council and probably to the city manager as well. Um, well, maybe not the city manager, but that's why it's on the agenda. Um, anyways, what the, the uh, LTC is looking for is a new portable switcher. I don't know what a new portable switcher will do, but it must be important or they wouldn't have asked for it. And um, after last week's meeting in which we were talking about all of the money that the city has saved through, uh, through <laughs> Prudent, prudent fiscal policies, it might be possible for you to find $28,000 to help them out. Thank you. Madam Manager. Thank you. Um, and to you, to the council, we, we, we didn't have this request made directly to us, but I appreciate that uh, LTC sent this out to the council. We'll certainly meet with them and talk about it. It would probably require amending the contract um, and, and hear them out on what it is. But um, this, you know, we, we, we saw it, I think, around the same time you did so. Council Elliott and Council Noon. Isn't there a board, Madam Manager, of which there a is. member of the city council is supposed to be appointed to represent us there? I think so, yeah. Uh, there always was someone of the council, and there we are, can it, check. I believe it was a requirement. Have, yeah. yeah. I'm Who not is, sure. Is there? Council Leahy. Council Leahy is the member. Oh, OK. Yeah. I just. Oh. Council, you all set? Council Noon. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, you know, um, LTC is our very good partners, and I, I, will, I learned too that the current switcher, uh, portable switcher, is not working well. Give us, uh, give them problem, and you know they use this to really cover all the folk festival, or municipal meeting, and whatnot. So um, this certainly will improve their graphic. Uh, and because it's not up to par, and they're talking about the file input option are not good. So this new switch is certainly is going to help them in hand them to do a, a better job for us at our first festival event and or municipal meeting. So uh, whatever the manager can and Connor can do uh, to help the LTC, uh, really, I'm sure they greatly appreciate it. Thank you. That's it. Okay. 
Next, we have a motion by Councilor Mercy requests City Manager Ford to a proper committee a request for a memorial bench paid for by Jody Jolay in the memory of her mother, Shirley Austin, to be installed by Parks Department to replace an old bench at Shed Park. Second. Second by Councilor Noon. Councilor Mercy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This motion more or less speaks for itself, and I know that it will have to be referred to that brand new monument committee. This is another one of those. Um, I think it's only nice for someone to want to replace a bench at a park that is falling apart, and in doing so, to name it in memory of her mother. So that, I think, is a nice gesture, but I'm not the one that could make that decision. It would be that board. So thank you very much. Finally, last motion by Council. I request the manager to develop a task force on fire safety infrastructure to develop a strategic plan and identify state and federal grant funding resources for firefighting equipment, vehicles, firehouses, energy conservation. Second. A second by Councilor Newman. Councilor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's a long motion. Um, I tried to get everything in, but it does speak for itself. Um, you know, just last week, there were we accepted two significant grants for the police department and funding important initiatives. Um, most of us have filed motions about the fire department. It's, we are including improvements in the capital plan. Madam Manager, I know you're on top of it, but I, the difference, I think, with police and fire is there's significant, there's grant money out there, and George Rose and David Keene and Brian Poitras and a whole group of, and I shouldn't start naming individuals because then you leave individuals out that are dedicated, they know where resources are, they're interested in, um, in applying, and but I think we also need a plan. And um, so I'll stop there, look forward to the report, but I know there is a group of, individuals and more that would be willing to sit on this. I think we see success with the opioid task force. And I, I just think task force works, Madam Manager, because it's um, getting s stakeholders, people that are involved, that have um, expertise in one room on a regular basis and walk away with a to-do list. So I'll stop there. That's the motion. And um, hopefully it'll work. But I think it's worthy considering there seems to be significant uh, federal and state funding. Motion. That's a good Thank motion. You. I mean, the thing is, like, do you consider also contacting the Congresswoman's office to have somebody, in other words, Bless from you. their office to be yeah. available? Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I, I, said, I, I, I think task force, whoever the city manager thinks can add value to that task force, absolutely. I mean. I would concur, the Congresswoman and, and the legislature and the Senate, because um, that's, you know, we need some help. Um, historic resources are yeah. are somewhat plentiful, if you will, so that's the motion. No, thank you. Any further discussion? Okay, announcements? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Tomorrow night at the Yowell Diner from six to eight, there's a fundraiser to help a family in need. This family is a small, mom and pop business where the husband passed away and we're looking to help the lady who is in financial straits and many of us benefited from having our printing done by this lady so if anybody would like to go from six to eight and give a donation that'd be great thank you so much afternoon thank you mr mayor i was asked to make this announcement um the um cambodian american near and far Actually, they host the Paris Peace Accord, October 23rd, 1991, Paris Peace Accord Agreement. Um, for after 28 years, um, Cambodia uh, still don't have a free and fair election. Uh, the rule of law doesn't work. Uh, the freedom of press is nowhere to be found. Individual rights still being violated. So this group, Ni and Fa, uh, come together to have this di discussion, kind of, you know, what worked, what didn't work, and what can we do to address it. I'm not, I'm just making this announcement. Uh, the event is going to be on October 20, this Sunday, at the Sapomi restaurants. So everyone is welcome. Everyone is welcome to attend. All right, thank you. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. Thank you.